Hi, I'm Amy Pennington. This week on Check, Please, Northwest, where you take us out to your favorite restaurants. Can Columbia City warm our souls Caribbean style? Honestly, I think it'd be a great date night. Or are the spices of the Mediterranean calling to us from Valor? That was my favorite dish. And if it's Vietnamese dining you desire, let's take a ride up Old Highway 99. Surprise! <laughs> it is, and it's so good. You can taste it all next on Check, Please, Northwest. Check, Please is made possible by Sky City Restaurant atop the Space Needle, where people have been turning special moments into memories for over 50 years. The people at Sky City encourage you to get out and explore all the fresh ideas and tastes our amazing region has to offer. It was exquisite. I'll take you there next time. Oh. It was so good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amy Pennington, and welcome to Check, Please, the show where diners from all over the Northwest recommend and review their favorite restaurants. So here's how it works. Every week, we have three guests. Each recommends his or her favorite spot, and the other two go to check them out and see what they think. This week, retired executive and globetrotter Michael Fuel has sampled many exotic cuisines, and he says you need only go to as far as North Seattle to find a bit of Asia right here at home. But UW student Flory Kim says when she needs to take a break from the books and wants to indulge herself, she grabs her friends and heads to Ballard for a spiced up Mediterranean meal. But up first, consultant Val Thomas Matson says we'll enjoy a warm Caribbean welcome when we venture only as far south as Columbia City to grab a little indoor sunshine at her pick, Island Soul. Columbia City? Oh, this is Restaurant Row. We are a fabulous Southeast Seattle neighborhood. Live music, uh, winter months, uh, Friday nights. Our house musician is going to be here tonight, Shan Coleman. He's from Kingston, Jamaica. Guests will start uh, dancing in the aisles along with me and servers and Theo occasionally when he's in the house. We serve island soul food. Our head chef is from Ocho Rio, Jamaica, so we have a lot of the Caribbean influence. And then we have the Southern Bayou African-American soul food with the Southern fried catfish, fried chicken, Bayou gumbo. The uh, type of food from the islands is curried goat. Oxtails is eaten in both uh, cultures, in the uh, American soul food as well as in the Caribbean. We have a very festive atmosphere. We want everyone to feel welcome, warm, comfy, cozy. All of our food is cooked fresh in-house daily, and we make it with love. Val, you say Island Soul sustains your stomach and your spirit. Tell us why you chose it. Well, I chose Island Soul because it really reminds me of this extended community type of a home, right? You know you're going to be welcomed. You know the food is going to be good. And on top of that, there's always going to be a surprise. Okay, so what is your favorite thing to eat there? Well, it's always a toss-up. My favorite is always between the oxtails and the catfish. <laughs> and how are they prepared? How is the oxtail prepared? Oh, well, the oxtails, uh, basically, it's this wonderful stew, if you will. I love getting my fingers in there. It's the finger food. And when I was a little girl, my mother told me we couldn't eat in public with our fingers. But Island Soul welcomes that. Um, the catfish, oh, my goodness. The, the meat is so succulent. The fish, it just, ooh. Get you. And then it's so nice and crispy on the outside, just light and flaky and crumbly. And it tastes like there's butter and spices in there. And you just want to make your home there. I'm sold. Michael, what did you have when you went? <laughs> Knowing that we were going to a Caribbean restaurant, we were really excited about what they would do with goat. Uh, we've traveled in the Caribbean and we love goat. And yeah. it's very hard to find in restaurants. And when we got there, we ordered the goat, a curry goat dish. Mm -hmm. We said, oh, wow, curry, that's going to be just great. About 50 minutes later, the chef came out and said they didn't have goat for Aww. the day. Oh, no. Could they substitute oxtail? Uh -huh. Well, oxtail would be great. But when we got the dish, actually, it wasn't a curry dish. It was oxtail without any curry, and we misunderstood. We thought it was going to be curry. Mm -hmm. And we found the oxtail to be kind of in a bowl with a lot of congealed grease in the bottom of Ooh. the bowl. And we weren't very happy with the dish. Mm -hmm. Flory, what did you have when you went to Island Soul? Um... I had the Caribbean jerk with the pork ribs, and that was good. It was finger food, mm -hmm. which is exactly what I love. I'm not going to lie. I didn't really use a fork and a knife <laughs> by the end of it. <laughs> I just ended up licking my fingers, and that guy was good. But honestly, the black beans, that's what really got me. 
But I gotta ask, how is the oxtail prepared? They brown the oxtail in a hot, hot pan with a bunch of oil and garlic, mm -hmm. and then they braise it for a really long time right. in those broths and some spices. Mm -hmm. And so it right. ends up being this really succulent, fall off the bone mm -hmm. um, dish. And then they have a really light broth so that you can sop it up with one of their corn muffins, yes. I think. That's yes. Good, which we got the, for free. Yeah. Hey. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. So what did you think of those corn muffins? Um, I mean, to be completely honest, it yeah. was. I think it tasted better because it was free. Like <laughs> the little sprinkling of free made it like that much tastier. They make a big deal out of the corn muffin. It's yeah, on their website. It's, it's on the menu. Yeah, the coconut. I thought they were sort of nothing. I mean, they, they were dry and oh, there was no, nothing. No, 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 no. There was nothing served with them. That's it one needed. experience, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what about the atmosphere? I love the colors on the walls. Oh, yeah. the I love, colors are I beautiful. Like the environment. It's, yes. it's so yeah. nice. It's, yeah. My favorite thing about the interior is actually the paintings. Yes. They're yes. stunning. Yes. They're huge. They're dramatic. They take you away. They're very evocative mm -hmm. of, of, of that. What do you think about the neighborhood? Oh, you know, it isn't as though we never go to Columbia City. Being a Queen Anne resident, we go down, but not often enough. Truthfully, mm -hmm. we discovered another soul barbecue place down there that we didn't know existed. The bakery I love, and oh, it I gave us a chance to go into the bakery City. and went to a great bookstore. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's all kinds of interesting shops there, which reminds us to go back. And did you have the same experience, Flory? Did you like heading on down south? I did. I loved that it was right next to Columbia City Bakery because that bread is so good. It'd be nice to go on a weeknight just to take mm -hmm. things a little low and slow, but overall, I'd go back for the ribs and the beans for sure. I asked what was in the beans, but all he said was garlic and peppers, and then he stopped right there. So <laughs> I appreciated that the chef came out and I asked what would he recommend for side dishes for these two things that we're eating, and he recommended collard greens for my pork mm, ribs, which I did. I wouldn't have if he hadn't recommended it. It was an absolutely perfect compliment to the rib. It was tart, tangy, had the right amount of vinegar. It was delicious. And it just worked with the sweetness of those ribs. I liked it very much. The other side dish, however, didn't fare so well. It was macaroni and cheese. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of better macaroni and cheeses around town. But those collard greens are worth a trip back with the ribs. What about beverages? I had ginger beer, which I love, and you cannot find that everywhere in the city, and it was great. And then um, the gentleman at my table had wanted a uh, Long Island iced tea, and so our waitress recommended a com uh, Caribbean version of that, and uh, Steve took a sip of that, and he just fell out in his chair. He was happy. <laughs> I mean, I know he loved the jerk chicken, and I know he loved the beans, but when he had a sip of that drink, hmm, he was home. Who is the energy in the room? Who are the oh, clientele? I love the energy in the room. Um, I think to date, every time I've gone in there, I always run into someone I know. Oh, that's so cool. It is so cool, and that's part of the experience for me. So it really is a community experience. Uh, the chef, he always comes out to the table and he says hello. And I love taking everybody there. I'm going back in a couple of nights with two good girlfriends. I think it's there for everybody. Uh, it's just, uh, I love it. And how about you, Flory? Who is in the room? When, who can we expect to find, do you think, at Island Soul? Honestly, I think it'd be a great date night just to get to know each other over like a big pile of food. Yeah. So. so when you go back next time, Michael, who you take with you? I'll take my partner. I want to go back for a poor boy. That's one of the things I want to go back for. I, I saw yes, people being served those, yeah. and that looked it so Excellent. delicious. It and it's Columbia City bread, mm -hmm. and it just it looked great. All right, Val. <laughs> so you picked Island Soul. So give it a sum up for us. Mm -mm, good. <laughs> How about you, Flory? Um, great, messy food. Don't forget to order the beans. Michael? Well, I, I'm, I'm mixed. I have some mixed feelings here. But on the other hand, I would definitely go for ribs. I mean, I've been to the Caribbean and, and jerk chicken. I would love to try there and try some of the other stuff. And the warmth of the room is lovely. Well, you can try the Caribbean spirit yourself at Island Soul Caribbean Cuisine. It's 4869 Rainier Avenue South, 206-329-1202. It is open for lunch and dinner, and reservations are accepted for parties of six or more. Student Flory Kim says her restaurant is a great spot for a special occasion or any occasion at all. She says head across the Ballard Bridge to taste Chef Maria Hines' latest menu at Golden Beetle.
they come in, we want them to feel really warm and, and welcomed and feel like they're able to delve into a new experience of food. There isn't a huge representation of food from the Eastern Mediterranean in the Seattle area, so it's a nice jumping off point coming to Golden Beetle to be able to experience the warm spices and the flavors from the area while we still try and keep it approachable. We play around a little bit and bring in these gastropub elements while still maintaining the authenticity of that area. It's really beautiful food, it's really soulful. It has a lot of taste of the sun and being that we're in Seattle, it's kind of nice to taste those big, bold, sunny, warm spices and flavors. I think what's really special is it's a place where you can come and just hang out any day of the week and it allows you to have a bite, have a beautiful cocktail, have a full dining experience so you have that flexibility and it's my favorite place to hang out. So, Flora, you love the harissa that they have on the table at Golden Beetle? I do. Tell us why else you love it. <laughs> well, I've been always stuck in my own little sriracha <laughs> rut. So for me to try harissa for the first time at Golden Beetle, that just expanded everything else for me. And now I feel like I just got to put that on everything I eat. And the sriracha sauce hasn't been used ever since. But Don't you want her to bottle that I sauce? I know, I really do. I could just eat that with a spoon. That's harissa aioli. And yeah. It's, it's fabulous. Was it on the table? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had. Oh, um, I didn't notice. Oh, okay. Well, I'll take you there next time. Okay. I'll like, make sure we have one for each and of us. And I'm not a hot sauce person, anyhow, oh, so okay. I tend to shy away from the sauces oh, okay. unless I'm you know, introduced to them and mm -hmm. know it's what they are. It's not habanero hot, though. Yeah, harissa is like a, just a it's crushed a up, smoked pepper that's been mounted together with a bunch of oil, and so it just adds this sort of like smoky pepper vibe, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have a lot of heat. I feel like it's really great food but it's without pretense it's done so elegantly well but you don't get that air about it and on top of that you have to remember that it's all certified organic by Oregon Tilt and sometimes when you're eating the food it's so good that you forget it and it just falls to the backside but when you're re reminded of that, it just makes it that much tastier. Yeah, their mission statement at Golden Beetle is pretty solid and they do support local farms and all organic. Is there a must try dish at Golden Beetle? I did like the French fries. Mm -hmm. It had the sumac, I think, with a little bit of beef sumac. fat. Mm -hmm. And again, I've never met a potato that I don't like. Mm -hmm. No, the, the, the fries are cooked three times. Yeah. And in are they really? They're cooked three different know. times. The secret, of course, is that they're in beef fat, <laughs> and that just that used to be the original McDonald's fry, beef fat. Mm. Well, no one's supposed to eat that, and it's delicious. It oh, that's so the good. best part. I know. <laughs> it was so good. What did you eat at um, Golden Beetle, Val? I had a, uh, a lamb stewy soup. Oh, the uh, With the uh, garbanzo beans. Oh, no, no. And lamb, and it was exquisite. Um, and then it had a few crunchy elements in it, like fried wontons in it. I mean, so it was like, hello, surprise, kick, kick. <laughs> and it was just every, every chew mm -hmm. had a different flavor. Uh, oh, they had a kale. That was my favorite dish. Now that I would have gone back and taken oh, somebody home so if they would have shared the recipe <laughs> with me. That really was my favorite dish. I think the kale, what makes it so special is it actually comes with preserved lemon. Mm. So it's a whole lemon just mm. mashed with salt over a period of time and the skin gets really soft mm. and supple and you get this really nice, mm warm lemon tone. It was wonderful. I had the cauliflower. I had the, I think it was a baked cauliflower. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. I'd leave that. You know, the menu is divided into small dishes and larger dishes for sharing, and so we decided to take advantage of sharing a lot. We shared small and large. Did a spinach salad. The entree, one of the entrees was a tagine, and that's a, essentially, a Middle Eastern beef stew. Mm -hmm. I thought it just was ordinary. I really? didn't see anything exciting about it at all. Okay. It was tender, <laughs> but it wasn't full of these great flavors. Or I wasn't that thrilled. I'm not very familiar with Mediterranean cuisine. This is a big reason why I like the place so much, because I'm so used to Asian food and like particularly Korean food that I can like, oh, I recognize that, mm -hmm. I know this, I know that. But when I go to Golden Beetle, I have no idea what I'm in for. And that's kind of what makes the experience that much more um, exciting for me. 
And the server was so nice because she explained everything out. If we didn't know this word, if we didn't know that word, I didn't need to use my Wikipedia app on my phone. I could just ask her, and she was a okay with it. And how about sweets? Did sweets. anyone have a sweet? Oh, I did the donut holes. Oh, they were deep fried, and then they were dipped in a type of an olive oil that also had some other. Flavors in there, and that was really interesting. What did you think about the um, atmosphere, Michael? And what does it look like? It's crowded. There? It's busy. It's loud. Mm -hmm. It's That's young. Very true. It's very, very young. Very young. The hip crowd. Hip crowd goes there. And, and so it's just busy, but it's energetic. It's high energy. It's fun. Lori, <laughs> talk to me about um, the neighborhood that Golden Beetle is in. It's only a couple neighborhoods away from the UD. There are so many bus lines that go there. That neighborhood itself is really fun with the restaurants that are there and things like that. The neighborhood was Ballard. I'm from Seattle, and when we say Ballard, we know what you're going to get in Ballard, and that's what you get. You get Ballard. It's a very homogeneous society that's up and coming. Cute little kids running around in their knitted hats, and hey. <laughs> We're in Ballard. There's a lot of good ethnic food now in Ballard. Hmm. So, so the the strollers going down the street mm -hmm. to the Saturday market aren't really reflective of the food scene, I don't think. Hmm. That's true. I was going to say, I think since Ballard has so many great restaurants, you've got like La Carta de Oaxaca, you've got, you right. know, Walrus of the Carpenter is also in the neighborhood. There's yes. Delancey. So there's a lot of competition, obviously. Lots. And so for Golden Beetle to do well enough and for them to thrive in this neighborhood it speaks highly of what they do. Right. All right, Flory, well, Golden Beetle was your choice. Sum mm -hmm. it up for us. Really great food without the pretense. Um, don't forget the harissa. <laughs> now, uh, nice place to visit. I, it wouldn't be a destination spot for me. Sir? Uh, I'm probably not going to go back. And, and the reason for that is, is that I found the best thing on the menu was French fries. It just doesn't call me back. You can try the fries and the Mediterranean cuisine for yourself at Golden Beetle, 1744 Northwest Market Street in Ballard, 206-706-2977. Open every day for dinner and brunch on the weekends. Reservations are accepted. When retired executive Michael Fuel wants to take a quick trip to Vietnam, he knows exactly where to go. He heads up north on Aurora Avenue for what he says is the best Vietnamese pancake in the town and pulls right in to Mekong Village. We're a standalone building on Aurora Avenue. Once the customers walk into Mekong Village, we want them to feel like they're in an entirely different place. We want them to feel like they're in, just in Vietnam and feel very welcomed. We offer authentic Vietnamese cuisine and it features really fresh ingredients. And we use a lot of uh, fresh vegetables and herbs and spices in a lot of our dishes. Well, we designed the interior to seem like you're in Vietnam. We have the hatches and a lot of bamboos, a lot of plants. My mother is very passionate in her cooking. Uh, she enjoys cooking and these recipes were handed down from her father. So she just puts her heart out and that's pretty much the secret. Michael, you say you love the service at Mekong Village. Tell us what's your favorite thing about Mekong Village though. Well, my favorite thing is the food. I think the food's great. Uh, but then there's so much else that goes along with that. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere there is superior. Uh, when you make comparisons to other Vietnamese restaurants, I just feel like I'm in a, in a, in a place above, and I like that very much. What's your go-to dish? Probably the Vietnamese pancake or crepe. Um, the, there are crepes being made at places all over town, and maybe a couple of the most famous ones are in downtown in the ID, the International District, or up on 12th and Jackson. And we, I've tried all of those. They're good. This one is just better. It's lighter, it's fluffier, and it's just filled so much more full with seafood and vegetables that most people traditionally wrap it up in lettuce and, and eat it that way, and I just eat it like an omelet. It's eggy and crispy, and I'm sure it's very healthy. <laughs> Flory, what, what did you try at Mekong Village? That's funny because I actually had the Vietnamese pancake too, but I don't think we had the same thing. Oh, because I mean, not. it was good, it was tasty, but it was 
greasy as heck. <laughs> what did you try at Mekong Village? First of all, I have to say, I took my Scandinavian meat and potatoes eating husband into a <laughs> Vietnamese restaurant, <laughs> which sounds as horrific as it was. <laughs> and he loved it. I had the spring rolls, which I love. They were light, uh, and the vegetables were just out of this world fresh. I mean, they were like summertime fresh on a Friday night, and I just, I was just blown away by that. I don't know if you noticed in the spring rolls, they have, they do something that I've never yes. seen before. Tiny little twisted piece of the, the wrapper, yes. they roll it up very, very tightly, it's fried, fried. and then yeah. put in the middle of the yes. roll. Surprise. So you eat it, surprise, <laughs> it's, and it's so good, it crunches, yes. it gets the vegetables, yes. and I've never seen that before. It was lovely with a little yeah. peanut sauce on it. Oh. Take me home. Yeah, me too. I also had the uh, pork uh, rice vermicelli noodle bowl. Mm -hmm. And again, I was blown away by the, the freshness of the ingredients. I mean, the carrots, the cucumbers were just singing. And it was just, it was spring in my mouth. How about sweets? Did anyone have a dessert? I had this banana dessert that uh, was, what was it, wrapped in the sweet rice. Mm -hmm. And it was in the coconut milk. I will say, I liked that one a lot because it's not cloying. A lot of desserts that I eat when I go out to restaurants are a little too sweet for me. Mm -hmm. I've never had a uh, banana with rice before, mm -hmm. so that was a nice little twist. What were you going to say about atmosphere? It can be empty and it can be crowded. It's primarily crowded with Asian folk, and I think that speaks well to what they're doing authentically. Uh, the other thing is, is that it has different seating areas so that you can kind of choose the thing that will work for you. There's a whole area with great big booths that works for families. There's another room that's just tables for four that are set up. Yes. And then there's a whole area like tatami rooms. They're not tatami mm -hmm. rooms, but like mm -hmm. it, behind these screens right. where you can eat more privacy. And I think, that's, I think it's attractive mm -hmm. that way and provides for the kind of experience that you maybe want to have. You're not all forced into the same room. Mm -hmm. And I like that about it. And the women that serve there, that work there, are the most charming waitresses mm -hmm. in Seattle. Mm -hmm. They're genuine. Genuine. It's mm -hmm. not, they don't put a facade on, which I think that definitely helps with the environment. I feel like I would never cross out a restaurant if I go there only once. I think restaurants deserve a second try. So I feel like if I went there on a week end where it's a little more bustling, where, you know, it's a little more exciting, I would like it that much more. Mm -hmm. So who would you choose to take with you next time you go? A student would love it for sure. Because like you said, portions are huge. It's kind of embarrassing because we had no leftovers. <laughs> Should I even what? admit that? <laughs> you had leftovers for two days. I had nothing. It was empty. <laughs> You're a student. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> All that brain power. <laughs> Who would you take with you, Val? Oh my goodness, anybody and everybody. It was definitely for family. Oh, and one of the things uh, that I was told by the waitress is if you go on your birthday, you can have your meal for free if you bring three other people. So, oh, there you are. mark it on your calendar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Michael, so Mekong Village was your choice. Sum it up for us. Vietnamese pancakes is a definite. Uh, the spring rolls for me are a definite. And if you just want to have a, a lovely meal that's Asian in beautiful surroundings, that's the place. Flory, what would you say? I would probably go to a Korean restaurant in that area before Mekong Village, but for what I had food-wise, it was definitely tasty. And Val? I, I really enjoyed it. I would bring fr family, friends, anyone. And uh, we ordered a lot of different things on the menu, so it, none of it missed for us. You can taste the Vietnamese pancake for yourself at Mekong Village, 12020 Aurora Avenue North in Seattle. 206-257-1560. Open for lunch and dinner. Reservations are not required. So on this week's show, we featured Island Soul in Columbia City, Golden Beetle in Ballard, and Mekong Village in North Seattle. Let's recap what our guests had to say. First up was Island Soul in Columbia City. Val says the food is good, and you are always welcome. Flory says Island Soul has great messy food, and she loves the beans. Michael says he had mixed feelings, but he loves the ribs and the warmth of the room. Next, we visited Golden Beetle and Ballard. Flory says the food is great without the pretense, and don't forget that harissa sauce. Michael says it's okay, and he really enjoyed the fries. Val says it was a nice place to visit. Lastly, we went to Mekong Village in North Seattle. Michael says the food is authentic Vietnamese. 
He loves the service and the atmosphere is a step above the rest. Val says she enjoyed it and will definitely bring some guests. Flori says she'd probably go to a Korean spot next time, but she definitely enjoyed the food. We have had a wonderful time this week. I want to thank my guests, Michael Fuel, Flori Kim, and Val Thomas Matson. Join us next week for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check Please. I'm Amy Pennington, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Jibali. <laughs> <laughs> Check, Please is made possible by Sky City Restaurant atop the Space Needle, where people have been turning special moments into memories for over 50 years. The people at Sky City encourage you to get out and explore all the fresh ideas and tastes our amazing region has to offer.